still. So yeah, now we have some final wrap up sessions. So is this the concluding remarks and where to go from here? I will open this. And here we go. So first off, thank you to, oh, by the way, while we're doing this, can someone add feedback to the notes? Yes, working on the it. First, yeah. So first off, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, I think this was one of the best code refinery workshops yet. We'd especially like to thank all the exercise leaders or local, local organizers who ran events for like uh audience in person or online for other organizations around here. We'd really like to do more of this later. So please tell others to do it again. I think all the different diverse instructors who were here teaching with us. We've had many people from many different organizations and maybe next time we can have even more. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been answering all the questions in the notes. This is, um, well, it's a lot of work and it makes it really great. I've already mentioned the local partners. We've had other helpers around who have been running different things. And of course, thanks to everyone who attended the course. It wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So if you attended, there's feedback. So you can let us know feedback straight into the notes. You can email us or you can contact us um, otherwise. If you haven't registered yet and you would like to help with our funding and reports, please register now. It may seem a little bit weird to register after something's over, but look at it this way. We made it available for everyone, but the registrations, like even registering now, that's one extra person we can write down. Um, you'll also receive a post-workshop survey that can ask you, uh, I think it comes in a few months, but it will basically say, like ask you how this has changed your work later on. If you would like to keep studying or want to help more. So in uh, the next two Monday afternoons, there'll be bring your own code sessions where you can come and you can like basically take, take bring your own code and we'll look at it and discuss how the workshop tools can be applied to the code or answer any other questions you might have. So that would be a great way to get a little bit of follow-up. You can review and learn yourself later. We have a list of all the lessons here. All of our materials open source and will continue to be updated. So every time we teach the course, we do a little bit of updates to the material. The videos will stay on YouTube, well, as long as YouTube leaves them there. We encourage you to reuse it, reteach it, et cetera, either formally or sitting down with people and going through the lessons. So you can ask for local support from partners. So these are some partners that we know of that are happy to help you with your code and work. So at Alta University, there's us. We have a help session for researchers where we can answer questions. Research software engineers provide support for actually doing all of these things in your work. The CSC has also some support for research and a training calendar of follow-up courses. In Sweden, there's the new NICE infrastructure, which can support computational science. And the EuroCC National Competence Center Sweden also has courses. Norway, there's Norwegian Research Infrastructure Services. So basically we know that after this course, you've learned so many things. Maybe it actually is hard to go and apply it to yourself, but you're not alone. Come and talk to us. The people at these infrastructures are like us, the instructors, and are happy to help you with work. 
there's different upcoming courses that you might be interested in. So, well, I already mentioned the Bring Your Own Code sessions uh, the next two Mondays. There's a course, Python for Scientific Computing, which is actually about Python and the programming. So it's not about basic programming, but it's about how people actually use Python for science. So basically what libraries people use, what infrastructure, how all the stuff fits together. So our goal is to get a lot of registration and local partners before we commit to this thing. So please go and register, tell your own organizations to become a partner. There'll be information on the website soon, if not already there. A Julia for HPC course offered in Sweden, and I just got a request saying, actually it's between CSC and Sweden. And we just got a request saying that there should be more Finnish users registering. So do that. We would like to have uh, another live stream course in February-ish, which is about how researchers actually put all of these different tools together. We've been calling it a workflows course. And um, well, we need to actually plan it. But if this sounds interesting to you, let us know and help us do it. Uh, in June, we also have a live stream course that's sort of an introduction to the big picture of scientific computing and high performance computing. Um, it uses our cluster as an example, but is relevant to many people. Uh, ENCCS, the Norwegian Research Infrastructure Services, and CSC all have different course lists of things which are coming up. The next code refinery course is probably sometime between March and May next year. I don't know if we have an exact date yet, but you're welcome to come back for reviewing more. You can attend a few sessions. You can tell people who missed the second week that, okay, you can come again. Maybe you're now more ready. That's all good. If you want a certificate, uh, check the course webpage and it tells you what you can do depending on your location. If you would like a uh, alternative to GitHub that's hosted in the EU and publicly funded, there is source.coderefinery.org. This is a GitLab in instance. In principle, it's quite similar to how GitHub works. Um, it would be easy for you to figure out. Basically the same thing. You can sign up and for people in Nordics, you need to send a request to unblock your account so you can make new projects but people can uh, use projects there already. If you would like to help Code Refinery, so tell everyone about us, um, tweet about us, um, Mastodon post about us, and so on. Um, we, yeah, we have no limit to the number of people we can take for the future workshops. Come back as an exercise leader. So get the rest of your group, whether it's work or friends, together and guide them through the next Code Refinery workshop. You can be the local support to help spread these practices for other people. Or bring your whole organization. If you're staff somewhere, organize local groups, send out announcements, and become one of our local partners that's advertised above. If you want to get more involved in Code Refinery, we can use team members of many different types. There's a whole lot to do beyond just the basic teaching part. You can join our meetings each Monday afternoon. We tend to have them and go through, well, make future plans. We have a chat, which is not just about Code Refinery business, but about other research software engineer stuff and also has a help stream where you can ask for advice on different things and we'll try to help as best we can. If you want to join Code Refinery as an individual, we'll read this. Um, to, well, let's see, let's see here. I guess you can read as well as I can. Sign up for the newsletter, support our, like we have manuals that say how we do things that you can read. If you want to change the lesson material, well, basically now we, you've had a two week course in how to improve code refinery material. So you can go there and um, contribute as an organization. So this running your own breakout room kind of thing that I mentioned. Um, 
please get in touch. We would be really interested in working. If you want to make a career out of software. So the title research software engineer is what's used to describe people like us who are scientists and researchers, but are slightly more interested in the software side of things than the focus on getting publications. We like to work with researchers and on other projects to make them better using the skills we're best at. If you're in the Nordics, this group called the Nordic Research Software Engineers has um, things going on. You can get in touch. We have an unconference coming up. Oh, this link needs to be updated for 2023. Oh, and the date. It's these dates in October, where we'll talk. The theme is hidden gems and paper cuts, where people can present on tools and practices they've learned or problems they have, and we can share information. Um, yes. So after we're done, so, so right now there's going to be a little bit more Q&A. We'll go back to the notes and we will discuss whatever other questions you have until they start running out. After that's over, we'll stop the stream, but then we'll post the Zoom link that us instructors are using. And from there, uh, all learners can join and we can debrief and discuss together. So that being said, have I forgotten anything? No, I think it was a really good overview. Thanks. OK, good. Uh, should we go to the notes? Yes, and there is feedback posted at the end. Please let us know. That really helps. We look at this not only now, we also will look at the feedback next year when we organize the next workshop. Would anyone like more of these interactive coding session kind of things? So one idea we've had is to do more, well, whether it's streams or videos or whatever. Does podcast count if it's a video or is that only for audio? Well, whatever the case, more of these kind of sessions where we come and talk about certain small topics. Yeah, that would be really fun. I'll work on small problems, try to solve them together, record it, stream it. Because then we can see how it really is. How do we really work? Maybe people can contribute their own code and um, yeah, people can contribute their own code and we can fix it up on stream for people. Okay, I'm adding Q&A time here. So yeah, questions and answers over the whole workshop, anything. How we put it all together. So um, maybe we can start. So Radovan, what did you think of the workshop overall? I was distracted. I was just reviewing Yano's pull request. Oh, <laughs> Should you have shared your screen to do that, actually? Oh, well, fine. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, you share a screen? Oh, well, yeah, I was thinking if we should have sh shared our screen while we are updating the materials just to go mm -hmm. through the pull request workflow. But I'm not sure if that's done already. OK, I will review, but uh, others can speak. I'll be back in, uh, in a minute. OK. Um, well, not many questions. Just let me think, where did I put my notes? There they are. Okay. And if people like the interactive coding session. Let's see. I guess people are really running out of steam here. Yeah. 
And this this interactive session works well at the end when people are running out of steam. It also means that we are <laughs> trying to do something um, semi complicated together on the last day as the very last thing. But... There's a good comment about having many things to follow up on in the future adds a lot of cognitive load. So introducing them later. By later, you mean like the last days or something. And I think it just is intrinsically difficult here. Like the things we do and we're teaching, there's so many different layers that can all be put together. And, you know, really many computational scientists need to know a little bit about what we're teaching, but probably don't need to be an expert in everything. That's why science should be collaborative and you have people you can talk to that do go deeper or less deep or so on. So I'd hope that at least you're aware of what's available and can well, know when to come back to learn more. Maybe you've gotten inspired about um, learning something for the future or a future career or something like that. Yeah, I was also sometimes thinking about how can we, how can we teach in multiple languages um, instead of showing the example in Python? Is there any way that people can participate in their language? And maybe AI very soon will be able to translate everything we have shown into <laughs> R and people can just watch it in our voices. Mm. So that's something that I would like to solve. We are also thinking about, should we just pre-record everything in nice videos and should should we create like a MOOC and then then we, people show up for Q&A sessions and help sessions, but we are not sure whether people would watch it then. So how can we have a, how can we record, but also still have an event? We know it's long. We know it's um, that the second week, many people then leave after the first week. And we are thinking about how to, how to make the second week more relatable, more interesting without overwhelming. So we think about it a lot. It's a lot of work. Uh, it's, but it, we believe it's really meaningful. Yeah. And I guess I'd also say, I think this is probably one of the best courses in these kind of topics. So in terms of the openness and who can attend and interactivity and all that. I do like that it's, okay, we're all doing the same part at the same time. So, so it is interactive. Um, so teachers are also responding to the notes as they best can. Um, and so you can ask questions as it happens and they might, it, it affects what's happening on the screen. So at least my impression is that it actually does feel like um, it, that there is some conversation with the teacher happening. Whereas in a, in a pre-recorded video, it would be much more detached. But of course, you could also have cohorts going through the material at the same time, like starting every month or so. And then the cohorts could talk with each other or together. But, well, hard to say. Well, if there's not much more Q&A, should we wrap it up or do we have any stories to tell or do we have any music by any chance we might just have <laughs> i was okay. hoping for it <laughs> so this is it <clears throat> okay i'm looking forward
Thank you. That was really amazing, a great wrap up. So with that being said, Zoom is in the notes and see you later. See you, bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.